Hi, I'm Lou with another episode of My Car Story. And as you can see, I'm beaming because, well, we've got another fabulous finned car from our friend Frank Truce. Frank, what did you bring today? This is a 1959 Chrysler Windsor. And the Windsor, there were three levels. The Windsor was at which one of those three? That, Top of the line? No, that was the cheapest. That, <laughs> the was bottom. The, that was the bottom model. Now, how did you decide that you needed the bottom model? Well, I wouldn't have preferred it, but when you're looking for these cars, 57 uh, to, to uh, uh, 59 Chrysler products, uh, those were the, some of the very worst years for quality of Chrysler Corporation ever. Usually after three or four years, they, they were rusted out, and um, not long after that, they were worn out. So I happen to see this at a, a car corral up at the Iola, Wisconsin show they have every year in July. And, uh, you know, the Persian pink and tuxedo black was just too much for me to pass on. Come on right alongside me. Let's show this color and this car. Well, we put it in the sun for you because, well, you're just not going to get any longer and pinker from the factory than that. I actually have to step back one more step. I'm stepping on leaves to take that all in. That's incredible. They had a huge emphasis on the lion. So I'm going to start there and you're going to see when I do the trunk and treats everything is about the lion. We also have this nice mirror for even the lower end. We have a nice mirror on both ends which was good the wraparound windshield and I wanted to show this amazing roof line. When I saw the car originally and saw that roof I thought I don't remember these cars ever coming that way uh, but in fact they did that that is uh, uh, correct. Lots of chrome, lots of glass, the wipers coming from the inside out. Let's take a look at the front of this one I'll start up close. You can see the Chrysler wording across the front. Another lion in the crest. Kind of a thin lion. And then our headlights step back and take a look at what that looks like. It's got a little Christine edge to it, doesn't it? It looks like the movie Christine. Yeah, there. those cars, uh, the Chrysler uh, cars, 57, 8, 9, yeah, they had similar looks about them. They were all Virgil Exner designs. It was the, the forward look. Uh, and, um, you, know, uh, you know, Christine, of course, was a, was a 58 uh, Plymouth Belvedere. Uh, but it's, uh, it's similar. i just let you take that stance in for a moment. I'll take one step back. That, uh, the right mirror, by the way, would have been optional. You never got a a right mirror on any car that I know of of the, uh, the, the 50s and early 60s. Fabulous. Speaking of fabulous, nice the way they did that there. I think they did a great job. We've got another lion there. So we've got three lions, two Chryslers if I'm counting right so far. When we move back here, the always fabulous fins. I, I always thought the rear bumper on this car was peculiar. Uh, it looks like there's two bumpers. I, I don't quite understand why they needed an upper or lower bumper, uh, but that's, uh, that's what they did. Another Lion, another Chrysler, a great move there. Love the fin and both the dual antennas. Let me take a look back. Frank, how long you had this one? Oh, probably uh, 12, 13 years. And let's take a look at our trunk treats. And here we have our trunk and treats. First of all, on this trunk emblem, I really think that was really cool how they put that there. And it shows some of the different pieces here.
the touch and go. I want to just show you this 59 color chart. There's our color, Persian pink, and some of the other colors of the day. We also have the Chrysler Handbook, which is this. Helpful suggestions for pleasant driving. Gives you some details on the dash. How to make sure you get over the tracks so you don't have a problem. The stretching out for full size people. You can see that there. The new Chrysler 59. A lion hearted car that's every inch adventure. And the details there. This brochure showing all the lines. The Saratoga, and here we have our value packed Windsor. The 59 Chrysler. Now that's a heck of a brochure <laughs> for the New Yorker. Sir, may I get your car for you, sir? Notice it's in Frank's pink color. You're lying on the seat. I'm just going to put this here. This actually looks like the Art Institute with the lions out there. I believe it is. We'll say that that's the Chicago skyline. Our different brands. The Saratoga. And you can see this. And you see the uh, lions all over the place here in the background on the building. Getting the tip from the cap. The Chrysler Windsor, discussion of the Golden Lion. The two-door that we have. The Windsor, another picture of a lion in the background. Our convertible, our lion mascot. Of course, we have our lion hanging out in the back of our station wagon. <laughs> I guess they want you to get the hang of that. Looks like Ava Gabor back in the day. Check out, check out Green Acres. You'll see her at the beginning looking very much like that. The engine, the Golden Lion engine. The frame.
I'll show you the overall of the trunk. And we're back. Frank, let's take a look at the interior, shall we? As I take one more look at that tail light, with the little ladders on each side of that light, it's just really well done. Let me show that one more time. It's so fantastic. I don't want to leave it just yet. You did a nice job with that chrome right in front of the light. Let's take a look at the interior, shall we? Like I did when, when I bought this car, it didn't have any trim on the side. None. It had instead a black painted stripe. And uh, the, uh, I, I told the guy that had it, I said, I'm, I'm not buying it uh, like that. And he says, well, I have all the trim. And I said, fine, put the trim on it, I'll buy the car. He says, no, I want to sell it uh, as is. So uh, it was about uh, a year later he called me and you st uh, still want the car? I said, yes, but the same deal is you got to put the trim on. So I think, on, uh, I think there's eight pieces of stainless trim on each side of which he claimed uh, that all the pieces were there. Well, it, it turned out that they were all there except two. Okay. <laughs> and, and they were door uh, trim, the stainless trim pieces on the door on the other side, and I had one hell of a time finding them. How did you but find I, them? I, well, you can find any part for any car. It just takes time. Uh, the first couple I got were too badly dented to be straight. Okay. So the, the a little bit of the history on this car, it was... Uh, it's, it's got less than 20,000 miles on it, even though it's been all redone. But when this car was new, it did not have power steering or brakes. So I have to theorize the, the dealers back then used to advertise an impossibly low price on cars uh, to hook you in. And then, of course, the one they had with the real low price, nobody wanted for whatever reason. In this case, it would be because there was no power steering or brakes. So it had a few owners sat around for a long time. Finally, somebody got it uh, uh, before me and put power steering and brakes on, which, which is a big job. Uh, if you put power steering on one of these cars, you've got to change the steering column, I believe the steering box, and change the, the inside of the steering wheel, the, the, the turn signal mechanism, and the uh, horn. And uh, so, uh, uh, it was pretty much done when I got it. I had to get the turn signals and horn working. But uh, the the other thing, if... Uh, you have a clock working. Well, uh, yeah, now, I usually get everything on my cars working. Only exception is a clock. Even if you do the quartz conversion, eh, they work for a while. Interesting thing on the car is the radio. Uh, and, and so many people, they, they put a modern radio in. Well, when I bought this car, it had a modern radio in the glove box with a little remote control, which I really dislike those. Uh, and I only listen to AM radio anyway. Now, Frank, share with me the details of these floor mats. Well, it's always been a problem for me trying to find floor mats for these cars that kind of uh, look an original style and fit correctly, are made the same size, because needless to say, the footwells of these are much bigger than modern cars. So uh, somebody has re reproduced these. They started four or five years ago and have them in different colors. And they, they are, uh, to my knowledge, an exact reproduction of the ones that they, uh, they made I'm not sure. I would guess in the period 57 to, to 61. And so they, they fit just great. They've got that Chrysler logo on them. And uh, they look I, good. I put a piece of tape over the white uh, emblem there because otherwise they get scuffed up. Got it. All right. <laughs> That's perfect. So I got the. Uh, I got the original radio working, and uh, now the original radio will play off the front speaker, and the aftermarket radio with the remote control uh, plays on the rear speakers, so you can have both radios on at the same time on different channels if you want. One radio off each of the rear antennas. And that's kind of an interesting way they place the rear view mirror. But I do want to show... Yeah, Chrysler did that for a long time, put the rear view mirror on the dashboard. I, I see no real disadvantage to that. I want to show the sparkle in your interior, especially where the sun's hitting, you can see the sparkle. Yeah, the fabric is, is correct, but it had, the seats had been recovered. So let me just go back here, take in that bench.
What's the reaction when you're driving this one? Well, I think the, the color catches a lot of people's attention. Uh, a lot of times, uh, too, if I'm somewhere, uh, uh, Those are people uh, sort of marvel at the, uh, at the size. Oh, that's oh, wrong. <laughs> uh, and, uh, and I tell them that uh, all cars were Easy, that, right. that big back in the, uh, uh, in, in the, in the 50s because most people only had one car. And they needed, to, they had a family and they'd have to seat six people. So, but now why I need these cars today is I sell tombstones. That's my business. And those stones are heavy and sometimes I have to deliver them myself. So I need a car with a big truck, trunk that I can put a fair amount of weight in. Is that right? All right, let's take a look under the hood. And if you believe that story, I can sell you this car. Very reasonable price. <laughs> Thank you, Frank, for cracking me up as usual. Well, the tombstone part is true. Yes. The tombstone part, so that's why I was believing you. Let's uh, open the hood here. All right, this is uh, somewhat unique. If you'll see, there's a little flapper here. Oh, yeah. Which is uh, uh, fairly convenient. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I didn't see that coming. And I was thinking to myself, you can't really see where it's open. So this was probably... Uh, gone through and painted eh, 15, 20 years ago. Um, I've really just had some maintenance uh, items on it. So there you go, that golden lion. They got those on <laughs> the decals on the, on the valve covers. Let me just step around this side. Now this hood opens properly. I mean, you can get under here. Yeah. Let's give it a start, shall we? I'm seeing some massive horns on this. We'll give it a, we'll let it beep. Well, it's not in the mood to beep today. All right. But thankfully, it's in the mood to start. Can you step on the brakes for a moment? There we go. Go ahead, Frank, give it a rev. We'll shut that down. Frank, come on out. Well, thank, thank you, Frank, for showing us and sharing with us your big, huge, supersized pink Chrysler. Thank you, Lou. Always nice to see you.